of the lower bracket. And then it is Wee Woo next versus Troll Yarg. When it gets dicey. All the dice. Yeah, you have to bear in mind these these guys have been waiting an awful long time for this tournament and then if they just right. get knocked out 2 0, then it's gonna be quite upsetting. Like we've had a pretty depressing week of uh <laughs> we when's G C D gonna happen, you know, like we're just waiting, waiting, like so anticipating it. And then imagine their next week if they lose now, it's gonna be pretty yeah. pretty upsetting for these guys, I think. Yeah, there's a lot on the line for these guys. These guys have been waiting for GCD TVs, not just this rescheduling uh, dramatic week that we had to go through, but for a long time. We've been asked so long to do European tournaments, and these guys are the top players that have proven themselves in GCD so far, and they, they don't want to be out yet. They, they want to continue to fight and uh, stake their claim on their abilities. But uh, we win next. You know, they really did show us a really high level of play of RMP and their ability to adapt and use CC in a, in a variety of ways, not just, you know, to CC the healer, but also, you know, make swaps and stuff. Um, but at the same time, Troll Yargan, they have shown us that uh, they are able to survive and put on the pain, specifically to reawaken, I believe, earlier today with their uh, Frost Mage Elemental Shaman Holy Paladin, or Resto Druid composition. Uh, can think, uh, yeah, that's gonna be weird. I think Kronz's team is the only uh, the RMP are the only team that didn't have a series go to five games last round, correct? Right. Yeah. It was like every single team that had a five round game, it just really shows how closely packed all these teams are. And I think, considering how close the series was against the RMD of Min Poike, I think this RMP can definitely cause a lot of issues to. Uh, Troyarkin, and actually they don't feel confident playing the early mage, it looks like uh, they've locked in the LSD for this one, so... Dampening, boys. Be quite curious. Lock, Shaman, <laughs> Druid comes out from Troyarkin as Walrix enters the arena for the first time this tournament. Uh, but I like this, I think that's, uh, it's universal, it's a universal composition. I mean, the LE, the Elemental Frost Mage uh, composition definitely put on the pain to reawaken, they got a really close series. But maybe they're just that more that that little bit more confident with their LSD play. I I mean I feel like the LA Mage would struggle to kill against the Discipline Priest. I, I feel like a Discipline Priest would be very well equipped to heal through the burst that they can do. So it's smarter to play the LSD and they just win through attrition. They need to Umkron, similar to the Turbo Cleave we saw facing against We Will Win next. So how well can they stop Krons from drinking? How much pressure can the RMP get early on? Can they force a lot of cooldowns? Maybe get an early kill through that way. Uh, Sap on Walrick's early kidney shot over onto Z-Pi. Uh, not actually choosing to Iron Bark the opening pressure this time around. Uh, the Ring of Frost will connect, and Blackfire's actually traded his Ice Block to get that. Uh, z is going to gate away to the opposite side, heal himself back up. Great gateway from z uh, But Soze follows up that Ring of Frost with a full Sap. His crowns. Whoa, what oh, the wait. happened to you? Uh, wow. Is he wearing gear? He... Yeah, I... Was he not wearing gear? I he just don't know. I didn't see, but yeah, he must have not been, because look how much that shield did. The shield did his entire HP. That that's is, really, really unfortunate. That's really unfortunate for Blackfires. He's going to go down to a terrible mistake of not wearing his tournament gear in game number one. And that means Troll Jargon is just going to get a free win. And that is a big deal. That is a huge deal. We win next. They are starting this series in the lower bracket on the back foot right away. And that is not the position you want to be in. Oopsie. Yeah, that's that's really unfortunate. As a <laughs> caster, that's really uh, awkward as well because it just. Uh, I I think these guys are going to be quite upset about that, but they can definitely come back into it. I mean, they, I think yeah, that seven, copies are in the matchup. Press ice over. Oh my god! Yeah, he's playing arena on hard mode. <laughs> <laughs> that was hard. That was World of Warcraft Impossible. on hardcore. Yep. But luckily for him, he still has his character, unlike Diablo, and he'll be able to re-equip that tournament gear going into game number two. But unfortunately, the ruling does say tournament I... gear must be required, and there is no replays. I, I was wondering why Zipai took no damage because I was like, that setup was really yeah. good. Like, yeah, I was Z thinking the same HP. thing, and he like gated away, and I'm like, I... that gate was insane, or what? Something went wrong there. That was. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I think, I wonder if Troyagan realized either, like maybe they're running percentage health because it took them a little while to exploit it. Maybe they were being a little bit sneaky. It's like, oh, we, we didn't <laughs> notice. I mean, oh, he died. Oops. I mean, Whoops, I pressed the button. Whoops, I killed him. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to be getting into game number two here very soon as uh, this RMP is going to have a lot of work to do against this LSD if they want to take him down. Uh, that being said, they now have the composition advantage as well as the map advantage. And if they lock in LSD, if Troll Yargan locks in LSD once again, are we going to see an RMP once yes. again? Yes. Yes. Definitely. There's Not no way to play Hoi for another yeah. gun There's absolutely no way. <laughs> um, and to be honest, RMP, I feel, can win. Uh, as long as, like, they, they can play aggressive when Kranz is full mana. And if they are going to play aggressive, then they need to be like, okay, when are we going to set up a drink? Because we actually have to think about this. Because if Kranz runs out of mana, we can lose. And as long as they're setting up drinks for Kranz, I actually think they can just extend the game to the point where Soze's damage as a combat rogue is going to be too high. LSD to deal with and maybe even just kill through cooldowns. We saw uh, Zipai go down through Shamanistic Rage to the, to the combat RMD earlier and uh, they definitely have the damage to do it. So I really think that the RMP can play aggressive, try and get an early kill. As soon as they start like, okay, there's a lot of cooldowns coming up. We're really losing our opportunities. We need to start looking for drinks and set the drinks up for Kron so that they can take this. Uh, I completely agree. I think the RMP has quite a lot of sustained in this matchup, and especially if they keep getting their setups over and over, it's going to be quite hard for the LSD to finish them off. So I think they do have a good chance. Uh, having played that first game, I hope they're not too rattled by the outcome. But um, we've seen some great plays from this team, and they did, uh, did struggle against the Turbo, but I think this is an easier matchup for them. They have an elemental to train now rather than an enhancement, so... Uh, yeah, I, I think we can expect good things from them. I think we expect this series to go on to uh, maybe even all five games again. I think they have a really good shot, but uh, it's just an unfortunate way to start it off. Yeah, they can't let it tilt them, though, man. they got to keep it in it to win it uh, moving forward into this series. Uh, and as we wait for them to, to make their decisions on compositions and whatnot, uh, I do have a few people to shout out. We did get a $10 donation from Pushkin TV. Pushkin TV. And uh, he says, thanks for organizing these tournaments. Keep up the spectacular work. Thank you so much, Push, for that $10 donation. We also got a $5 donation from Lassie. And every single dollar and every single cent of all of these donations go directly towards that final prize pool of the entire season. And the reason why we can do that is because of the financial support of our sponsors, but also the EU community. So thank you guys so much for that. But here we go. Tiger's Peak is going to be the next map choice coming out from these guys, and we are going to see the same compositions from both teams. That last match was really like a testament to, you need an arena mom on every team. Like, someone on the <laughs> team has to be like, do you have the right macros? Is your trinket keybound? Do we have marks? Are you wearing gear? Like, you need an arena mom. Like, did you pack your books? Your pens? You ever pen? Like, because if you're forgetting something and then you lose because of it, you're going to be like, oh my god, no. Why did that happen? Yeah. Like it, it's terrible. So if you're like a if you're on a team and you're playing in tournaments like that, make sure you have an arena mom. Arena mom, OP. Really is OP. Um, <laughs> Blackfires is going to be much scarier than last time. That 7k I know is probably going to be 100k uh, this time <laughs> around. So let's see what they can do. We will win next. Uh, is pushing forward in stealth, getting ready to attack. There's a sap over on the Zipa. Are they going to change their targets here? They're going to open on Walrix, and Fnabber sees that. He pre iron barks, pre scenario wards, and Walrix oh. just gates the heck out of there. He's cutting pretty well right now. Portal's back, uh, I believe, on the vanish of Sozi. So really good cutting from Walrix, but they're keeping the CC going on to Fnabber's. That iron bark has now faded. Full blind on Fnabber's. He's going to trick it into a silence. Good silence from Kranz. Just trying to slow down the healing a little bit. Maybe bait out a couple more cooldowns. Smoke bomb gets dropped. Double fear lands. Walrix is forced to uses dark regeneration he's trying to counter pressure with this dark soul but he gets gouged on it do they have any interrupts for walks very important that they stop him from casting with this dark soul up looks like he's not taking any risk he's just soul swapping only using instant dots doesn't want to risk getting locked out going for that soul burn hot trying to get it off uh, no interrupts used just yet. Walrix, he should be getting some decent pressure with this Dark Soul. 25% mana down from Kranz here. It's very important to watch Kranz's mana. We can see Fnabber's pre-Scenarian warding, but he does not have Iron Bark. Walrix could be in a bit of trouble here. Killing Spree out from So's Nice Shadow Fury from Walrix. Going to stop that Killing Spree in its track. Really good play from Walrix. 
Yeah, that was a really good shout out for you. I actually hit two or three members of We Will Win Next and forced the trinket out from Sozuri. So maybe that uh, will lead to something later in the game. Fnobbers, with these scenario rewards, he's getting it every single time before the setup. I really like that talent choice from him. And uh, it looks like they they are still in a little bit of trouble. There's no regen available or trinket on Warwick's or Fnobbers. So if they can get this next setup, and here it comes. It's coming out of the block as well. So you should be able to land a bit of nice knock from uh, Zipai. It means that they're going to be fine here. I mean, the scenario ward comes out. And there's no CC on Fnobbers. He's going to go offensive now. Try to get some Cyclones out. They force the block onto Backfires here, so they should be looking to go offensive. Kronz's man is sitting at around 50%. Here comes that bash. Whoa, whoa, this is what we were talking about. He doesn't have Trinket available. He used it earlier, and he goes down almost. He's down to 30%, and Kronz has to Trinket out of the Cyclone as well. So they basically have no defensive cooldowns left. No blocks, no Trinkets, and it looks like this RMP is in a lot of trouble with the Dark Soul from Warwick ticking on all three of them. Yep, Kronz's mana is going to be the important factor here. They've got one more attack left in them. Uh, full Fear over onto Fnaber, now into the full sheet, forcing that Shamanistic Rage out. But Zipa has died through Shamanistic Rage before to a similar composition. Maybe they can just burst him down even through it, down at 37%. Shadow Fury, defensive fears from Walrix. He's trying to peel for his team right now and keep Zipa alive. He's doing a good job so far. Now that Fnaber's has left the CC, he's going to get some hots up, top his team off, keep their damage rolling. They really need to stop Kronz from getting a drink. And it doesn't actually look like Kronz is interested in drinking just standing right on top of his team getting ready for another push they did get sham rage maybe they're looking to get the trinket walrix has dark soul up though walrix is looking to do a lot of damage with that kronz has caught into a bash into a clone good chain from fnobbers they're trying to force a block no actually no blocks available for blackfires in a lot of trouble right now kronz leaving the cc though squeaking out a saving grace caught into a half fear good cc chain from walrix but it is inevitably good Kronz should stabilize Blackfires. Full blind onto Fnobbers. He's trying to be greedy as he did pre Iron Barket and an SZ Pi prior. Really predictive play from Fnobbers, and he's able to sit through that blind uh, pretty safely. Really well done. And now Troll Jargon are getting very far ahead. Yeah, Troll Jargon looking really good, but Kronz is sitting down for a small little drink right now. If you can get that, but Warwick is quick to the pace. He stops it instantly and this tracks 30% mana on Kronz. This is their win condition, of course, and they get a nice uh, deep freeze onto Fnobber. Will they get the follow-up? They do get the fear, and the Sham Rage is just cutting through it, but the Tremor comes out from Zipai. Doesn't look like there's a follow-up sheep on this occasion. Well played by Troll Jargon to shut down that CC chain, because he looked like he was dropping really low through the rage here. Now it's their turn to go offensive. Zipai just chucking out those meatballs, those lava bursts on to Blackfire. He senses that there's so little cooldown, so little mana left and we win next. They do have one ice block available now, but Kronz and Sozzy look like they are the targets. Sozzy dropping down. He's on 100% HP right now, though. Nice heals from Kronz. But he's struggling so much with the mana. You see the dots and everyone, and it's now we win next turn to go again. But another stop from Warwick getting a really nice CS. They do get the sheep anyways, though, because of that fear. And this is trouble, perhaps, for Troy Yagen. They do have trinkets available, but they won't want to use them. They'll want to try sit onto them, and it looks like there's no follow-up sheep. Well stopped by Zipai. And the smoke bomb comes out just a little bit too late. We do see the iron bug, but the snaring world, the iron bug, it looks like it's going to be enough, perhaps, but he is dropping incredibly low for it. And we can see that potential for this RMP if they could just land those reshapes they're gonna land the kill at some point but at the minute Troy can have a lot of cooldowns available all three trinkets the sham rage the dark regeneration and you have to wonder where it's gonna come from yeah Kronz needs to get a drink but they're not going to allow it Walrick's pushing forward landing a triple stun on the entire RMP uh, Walrick's moving forward looking to try and get full dots up here he needs to maybe try and get some dots on the Kronz I mean it looks like he's been trying to CC Kronz instead of hitting him we see another attack over onto Zipai preemptive scenario ward Shamanistic Rage is going to get traded out obviously Soz must be pretty close to his red buff here uh, for Zipai to Sham Rage like that we see Aura Mastery Hex actually coming out on the Blackfires unfortunately that will break right away uh, nice winch here though on the re Polymorph and Blackfire Fires is taking a lot of damage here, forced to block. Uh, Kron's maybe looking for a drink, but in the meantime, Fnoppers is just really good about reading the blinds that he can sit and he can't sit uh, because he saw Blackfires in the in the block at low HP. He knew that Kron's ran out of mana. He knew they could get away without trinketing that blind. And these greedy plays keep his team ahead. They all still have their trinkets. They're not allowing an opening for We Will Win next to kind of penetrate through. We can see the earthquakes getting dropped down. Zipai's uh, high school science experiment just exploding behind the pillar at the moment here, trying to keep them in combat and prevent Kron's from drinking. Just slowly attrition their opponents just sucking the life out of them while Rix is just slowly killing them there's the hot over onto Soz I believe he's trying to get some pressure uh, he's dipping dangerously low here Kron's is trying to sit for a drink at the same time maybe they just trade the cloak for it we see adrenaline rush coming out from Sozi they're trying to unleash a big attack here on the Z-Pi but with no CC on the Fnobbers he should be able to deal with it nice Shadow Fury deflecting the entire team 
uh, we will win next. Now into the Earthquake stun, and Zipa is just going crazy with these Chain Lightnings, doing a lot of damage to the entire team. Everyone down to 60%. Kron's trying to play as efficiently as possible. He needs to maintain his mana. In the meantime, Fnobbers is the one that was able to sit down for a drink, and now sitting at 73%. Troll Jargon have all their cooldowns really to survive. They just need to keep pushing forward, keep doing as much damage as possible. Uh, I mean, they're, they're trying not to be reckless, but I feel like in this position, maybe they could. Preemptive Iron Bark and Scenario Ward over onto Walworks. Walworks going to portal back. Nice job, uh, Thunderstorming and Wind sharing the CC of Blackfires. And now Blackfires is taking a lot of damage as he was pushing forward. And now they didn't get the CC. Their setup is over. We will win next are on the run, but Troll Jargon are just hunting them down relentlessly. Everybody getting dotted up here. Uh, luckily, nice counterspell from Blackfires. He's going to slow down Walworks' damage for a little bit here. Uh, now that the interrupt has faded, though, he's just loading up dots. And, you know, inevitably, Krons will oom. And I, I think, inevitably, they will end up losing a lot of burst over on the Blackfires, down to 35% HP with one more block remaining. He has to be careful with that. Zipai's surprise burst can definitely catch you off guard. Yeah, and like you say, they're playing this attrition game perfectly, Troyagin, right now. They're just ooming Krons. They're getting through the cooldowns. I don't think this team's got too much left for them. They really need to go for one of these last-ditch attempts. But there's all cooldowns pretty much available on Troyagin right now. And Fnobbers is just sitting so so healthy right now. He's just so happy with his team's uh, situation. I think Krons is surely going to uh, struggle in the near future to keep his team alive. Yeah, we can see Krons is, is still just trying to find a way to get a drink. He's pulling very far back. Um, but I don't think they're going to allow it. He goes into the Spectral guys. He's trying to play sneaky, move away from his team maybe. Uh, not going to go for the drink, has 15% mana. Like They need a surprise kill. They basically have to kill someone through all their cooldowns if we will win next, they're going to take this game. So they might want to wait for more dampening. It looks like they're setting up an attack over onto Walrix. They don't want to deal with Shaman Rage. They don't want to deal with Barkskin. That's too much damage reduction. So I think it's smart going onto Walrix into dampening. His own personal self healing is going to be lower as dampening reduces all the healing in the match. A blind into a sap. Fnobber's forced to drink it out of that. He's going to top with the nature swiftness now we can see Kron's looking for a drink is he going to be able to sit down and get it he's trying he's getting some mana 35 percent 40 percent 50 percent and suddenly we will win next wow. could easily be back in this game that drink is so massive for Kron's he just needs to top his team back off try and get some momentum Blackfires needs to maybe block he's down at 21 percent they set up the drink now they need to recover they're trying to get out of line of sight but Zipa is just never giving up drain soul triggered out from Walrix trying to suck the life out from we will win next despite getting that drink up troll jargon are not not giving up the aggression. Yeah, and I feel like Troyak can need to push in to get this kill, but yeah, like you say, Krons with that drink, like if they uh, overextend here, they can die. Warwix, uh, Fnobbers with no trinket, and Warwix is very exposed in dampening. There's a lot of dampening right now. It looks like they will want to set up onto him, but uh, like, I, there's so much dampening. It's so hard for a Disc Priest to outheal this damage. You can just see their whole team rotting. If they can just get the offensive push, though, Fnobber will struggle to keep up. Yeah, Kranz is doing a good job so far using his evangelism. He's just spamming out the whole fire. Holy Fire is trying to get bonus healing as much as possible. Here's a setup over on a Walrix. Quite potentially a lot of damage for him. Down at 48%. Triple CC. We will win next. Are they going to pull this game back? Walrix is trying to run. He's got his Dark Regeneration up. A defensive Shadow Fury, but Sozi managed, I think, to get a restealth temporarily there. He will reconnect onto Walrix, and Dampening is getting higher and higher. Fnobber's healing is going to be less and less. It's going to get more dangerous as the game moves on. We see a full bash on a Sozi. He's just going to shrink it out of that. Doesn't want to risk getting bursted down by Zipa here uh, after they force the Dark Regeneration. Fnobbers with no trinket. The next setup could still be the game. Deep Freeze is available. There's the sheep on the Zipai. Are they going to pull the trigger? Blackfires goes in for the block. They're committing everything to kill Walrix. They land the full sheep with no trinket. Walrix is completely alone. Caught behind the pillar. And Sozi is looking to finish him off. Zipai gets locked on his heel into the silence. And Walrix will fall. Surely he's 2% HP. And he will inevitably go down. And we will win next. They're going to take game number two, setting up the drink for Krons to maintain themselves long enough to gain an advantage in dampening where Walrix's personal self-healing and defensive cooldowns just become void and they commit all their damage. They commit the ice block. They knew that they had it and they're going to take it. Yeah, that's the last setup was so, so, so clean, actually. They land the CC. They still even have the block available on Blackfires to 100% make sure they land it. They have the cross CC for Zipai with the CS for that off-healing, which may well have saved him. The off-healing from an Elemental Shaman is quite significant, but uh, Sozi's able to freely chase Warwick's down. There was no Shadow Fury available, nothing to peel him off, and uh, he ultimately does go down. Really well played by We Will Win Next, because like we said, the attrition game coming out from Troyagin was quite uh, difficult for Quants to deal with, but they're always managing to peel off and allow Quants to get these drinks, which is winning them games, because they can win dampening against these teams. <laughs>
you know, that's got to be feeling really good for this Rogue Mage Priest team of... Um, I forgot their name already. What was their name? We win, we win next. next. <laughs> it was one of those. It was one of those verses. You know what I mean. But uh, yeah, they got to be feeling so good after going into game number one, forgetting their tournament gear, having such like a you know demeriting loss, and feeling upset for yourself. Going into a crazy game like that and pulling out a win from uh, one of the one of the very best teams in EU. I mean, they, this is one of the teams that got into the tournament from how high they were seeded, going up against a team that had to go through a very grueling qualifier, single limb bracket to get here. They got to be feeling a little bit better about uh, taking that win uh, against Troll Yargon. But we're going to be getting into game number three here. got to remember, game number three, this is a best of five series, and the team that loses this series will be completely eliminated from the tournament. No one wants to be eliminated first round. Yeah, you have to think as well that, like, you talk about this difficult process that uh, the RMPs had to go through. If you lose this series, most likely you're going to have to go through that process for the next tournament because 7th and 8th are not guaranteed their spots in the uh, following GPL tournament, uh, assuming no teams break up. So you definitely don't want to lose this because if you lose this, you're probably losing your spot in the GPL for next time without at least having to go through some sort of qualification process. So this is high stakes here. It's 1-1 one -one right now. We do know that Troll Yagen do have their Ellie Mage available. Maybe they're going to swap over to it, but this game was quite close. They did have the dampening potential. Maybe on a smaller map they could finish the game off without allowing Krons to drink, but we'll have to see. <laughs> I love that Krons was getting those drinks off, though. That was It was pretty cool to see. Um, but speaking of smaller maps, we're going to be hopping into the next game here, which is going to be played out on Ruins of Lordaeron. Hmm... Now, that being said, we did also see Troll Yargen, you know, when they have the ability to, to have their team out in the open when it was Frost Mage oh, Elemental whoops. Shaman, they were actually able to, um, you know, get a lot of that pressure out and keep uh, maintain, like, a whole bunch of momentum. So this could very well backfire, and we will win next. Or backfire is accidentally uh, pressed his on use trinket. Oh, did he? <laughs> I, I think it'll be up by the time that it matters, but... Maybe he's, you know, he's getting a little bit trigger happy. He's kind of like, I'm getting, I'm getting those headshots. I'm ready. I just keep coming. I just keep coming. Like he's just kind of like sitting on his fingers a little bit too much. I mean, it's still nothing like that Windwalker DK team though. They were incredibly uh, raring for the game to go. But yeah, I think this team's probably getting a little excited because they they've had a bad start to this tournament. But that was a reasonably convincing game against a really top team. So. Maybe they, they are sensing that they have a good shot in this series, and for sure, I think they do. Yeah. Especially if uh, Troyagin stick to this LSD. Um, we're going to see quite a slow start to the game, and like you say, Blackfire probably calling to his team, I want my own use trinket before we open. They do open up onto Z-Pai, then we do see the Scenarian Ward as well as the Iron Bark. Should mean the Z-Pai is completely fine right now. The Defreeze into the rough, and they're swapping it onto Warwick's actually. He used the Unbound Will, so he's already quite low HP. Oh, the DR oh, stuck, no! he might just die instantly. He's smoke bomb, he's 20% HP. He does just about live. That was so, so close. An excellent swap by Wee Win next. There's no way Troy can predicted that, and that's a bunch of cooldowns out, but importantly, Flopper did hold onto his trinkets somehow, some way, and they have both demons, so they are going to be looking to counter pressure in the near future. Yeah, while Rex is saving his Dark Souls, he wants to make sure that he gets the full value of them, and it's not going to get kidney shot or interrupted, so I like the patience from Walrix. Uh, it's very hard for the LSD to get a kill early on, they definitely need to do the attrition fight. Uh, we can see Walrix seems to be the target still for now, full blind over on a Fnobber, he's going to trinket that into a deep freeze, are they able to chain that into anything else? Doesn't look like they can. A gouge, actually, instead. And there's the killing spray out from Sozi. A nice Shadow Fury. And these Shadow Furies from Walrix have been really uh, on point, just stopping Sozi on this killing spree. It's very important for him to stop them. Uh, we can see some pressure on the Blackfire. z trying to switch some pressure around as they have left him open. Uh, hitting Walrix means that z will be able to free cast, get to his Fulminate stacks uh, much quicker, much easier. He's a little bit more relaxed, so... Uh, maybe just training the Walrus might not work for them. Maybe they need to go back on a Z-Pi, wait for a little bit of a longer game. Uh, Smoke Bomb not available. They really don't have a kill potential there. But no Trinket on Fnobbers. They could maybe swap to him. There's there's a lot of choices really right now for the RMP. We see a Deep Freeze on the Fnobbers. It seems like they're committing to Walworks, but Fnobbers saw that read and pre scenario warded him. That scenario Ward, though, needs to be enough on its own as they still have the entire team crowd controlled at the moment. We will win next in a very good position, but a nice Tremor Totem from Z-Pi will break his entire team out of that fear. 
And now they're trying to push forward. Kranz knows that. Kranz is in retreat, cutting as far away. Maybe going to look for a drink. He's kind of being sneaky over by the tombstone. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm sneaky. I'm going to try and get a drink here. Uh, he's still maybe not dropping combat. I think he has a Shadow Fiend out. And that Shadow Fiend actually kept him in combat. And he wasn't able to drink. So I think Kranz is kind of getting put behind because of that. Uh, Black Flash used to block that as well, so he had to be a bit careful going that drink. I think he just got locked out. He might just die. Oh my goodness, he gets locked out on the penance instantly by Warwick's really fast reactions there, and Black Flash just goes down. I, I'm not sure if he was still in the hyperthermia. Maybe he had his second block of it. Or maybe no, he, no, he used two blocks offensively, right? Both so, blocks yeah. offensively, yeah. But that was so much damage coming out of Troy and You just see on z frame, lava burst, lava burst, lava burst. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That Bla you know, Blackfire's offensive uh, icebox, specifically his first one, I feel like was worth. They got so much damage on Warwick. He nearly died. But, uh, yeah, that's the risk of, you know, getting those offensive blocks and getting in there and, you know, trading that defensive cooldown up for um, CC. I think that was and what happens when you let z do what z wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His... High school projects turning into a little bit of a teacher's nightmare right now. But uh, Kron's definitely uh, was put behind by the fact that he wasn't able to get that drink. I'm sure he didn't want to sit down for so long, especially to no end like that. So uh, that was really unfortunate for Kron's. I feel like if he'd not gone for that drink, I'm pretty sure he could have kept his major alive. He wasn't topped off when he came out. So Yeah. That's a really good point. Maybe if he was able to top off preemptively, he could keep his mage alive because, you know, it's like kind of up in the air whether or not those offensive blocks were a mistake. I think the second one, they really didn't get enough to, to make it uh, an efficient trade. Justify it. Yeah. yeah, but in the first one, I think they did. I think they got quite a lot. So, you know, maybe, you know, I hope they don't take that loss and, you know, like uh, adapt their play too drastically because I definitely think they're onto something uh, with these uh, aggressive setups that they're running. Um, but yeah, we're going to be jumping into the next game know. of this series soon. I I actually think it's safer, like, th this is safe play, right? It's actually safer for the RMP to play for dampening, like, try and line of sight, you try and set the drinks, up drinks. Yeah. Because, because you're either going to get the drink, or you're going to force someone off the pillar to chase you to get the drink, and then you've exposed somebody. Right. So you can actually set up a better position to kill by running away then pushing in almost i wonder if they're gonna go back to to the, that strat like they, that's kind of like the strat that they did in game number one um and i wonder if they're gonna go back to that or i'm sorry not game number one i'm sorry game number two the technical game number two um if they're gonna go back to that strat that you say like playing it safe and i think that maybe they played like that all-in strategy for that map because it is ruins there's no real way to get away maybe it'd be a lot harder to get a drink on, on a map like ruins all around but who knows? I mean, these players have shown that they have been able to adapt in the qualifiers. Um, so, right here, I mean, they're fighting for their tournament lives are on the line at this point, and they only have one more loss before they eliminated from the tournament. And I'm sure they don't want to go out like that. But uh, while we wait for these guys to make a decision, we did get a couple subscribers. Uh, Red Rummin, Red Rummy, thank you so much for that subscription, man. I really do appreciate that. You're my 227th subscriber. We also got a four month in a row resub from the one, the only, it's Elbareth, aka El Elbarth. Thank you so much, Ethan, for the love and support, dude. And we also did get a $5 donation from Lassie who says, Thanks to Machine, Supa, and Talby for this great entertainment. Thank you so much, Lassie, for that second $5 Aww. donation of the day. I'm <laughs> sorry, what? Wait, was his name Lassie? L A S S E. I could very well be mispronouncing it, but I'm calling him Lassie. I thought Lassie was the Lasse. Lass. Lass. I don't know if it's silent or not, man, but you're Lassie to me. And uh, you have <laughs> got us to $1,303 of our donation goal. And just a reminder, guys, every single cent that we get goes directly towards that final tournament that happens at the end of the spring season. So that's always pretty hype. The more and more tournaments that we have, the bigger and bigger the prize pool will get for these players at the end of the season. Uh, but here we go. The next game is ready, and it will be played out on Dalaran Sewers. And I know you guys love it. I'll see you guys in a hot minute.
right, here we go. And they're swapping the comp. They swapped the comp. What do you guys think about this? Uh, Troll Jargon, they're going to be running the Frost Mage Elemental Shaman Resto Druid instead of the uh, the Affliction Warlock. I mean, I mean, they're up a game, so they can have that advantage to try something else. Because I actually wonder if RMP, if, if you play it like perfectly, no mistakes, RMP maybe should actually win the matchup. Hmm. Yeah, I get the feeling RMP might have a small advantage against early mage. I think it's going to be really hard for the early mage to kill them, but perhaps they're uh, they're thinking that this team's under a lot of pressure right now. Maybe we throw in this curve, but like you say, they do have that advantage of an extra win. So uh, also the warlock Warwick was exposing a few weaknesses in the last couple of games. He almost died last game, and he died the game before that, so maybe they think if they remove that weakness, put in a mage, then uh, they're going to be stronger defensively. But we do see the opener. Actually, opening of the blind, Knob is trying to sit through that. Looks like he's going to do so successfully, although the sap does come out. The sham rage is on z but he's down to 50% already. There's no off-healing or appeals coming out right now. He's getting the growth. There's the deep freeze. If they can get anything off that, but the rob on Kronos means there's no fair. It looks like he's going to be okay. So they do exchange the sham rage for the blind there. I'm not sure if that's a great trade for we win next as Fnob is again able to hold his trinket. He still has the iron back available, of course. This looks really good for them. The Cyclone coming out onto Corns. They're trying to get good damage out. Soze dropping down to 50%. Black Fire's also at 50%. We've already seen a saving Grace Stacker on Corns. He's not going to be doing too much healing. Preemptive Iron Buck comes out from Fnobbers onto z -Pi. They're getting ready for their next go. Deep Freeze is now available. They would be looking to go offensive. Maybe they're going to try to go available. And unfortunately, the Sheep Breaks on Kronz. They do deep him instead. The Earthquake, unfortunately, breaking that. That will force the PS and the block overlap. But he comes out of the block instantly. Looks like they want to go offensive. Can they get the CC onto Fnobbers? It might be a little bit too late, but he gets the Fear instead to cover it. There's no Trinket Tremor. There's no Trinket available. And they do get the Sheep off that because of that. He Tremors is super late. There's the... Uh, Sham Rage from Zipai, and it looks like Flubber's actually forced to Trinket there. That's really bad for Troll Yagen, who now have no Sham Rage, they have no Trinkets available. They're in a lot of trouble, but we do see Kron's put into that sheep. Yeah, we can see uh, Sozi getting set up on here in that Bastion, now getting cloned up. Deep Freeze on Kron's is Fnobber's going to look to rotate the clone. He rotates the clone over, a lot of pressure over on the Black Fires. Lava Burst after Lava Burst. Ice Novus connect, down to 50%. Kron's leaving the CC, dropping a barrier, reducing the rest of the damage. Now going for the setup. Fnobber's caught on the Deep Freeze. They land the Ring of Frost. It could be a 3v1 situation, but these defensive polymorphs from Leaksy are really slowing down the pressure. Nice root as well from Leaksy, allowing z to kind of run away for a couple seconds. They land the full fear, though. Nice cover with that Garot Silence. z down to 30%. Uh, Fnobber's throwing out that Iron Bark to reduce any more incoming damage onto him. He should be able to survive with that. Now, having used the Ironbark, they need to bring the pressure. Deep Freeze over on the Krons. They're looking to get some CC. They land the Ring of Frost. Sozi's gouge is just one second too late. That one second could cost him the game. Sozi forced to use that Cloak of Shadows to immune incoming magic damage. Well done. He's going to survive with that trade, but they chain it into a clone. They've caught Sozi in a bash. Do they have enough damage to finish him off? It looks like they're actually hitting Blackfires instead. He does have one more block remaining, but with no CC on the Krons, Krons should be able to pick his team back up here. In the meantime, they've actually forced z to Shamanistic Rage. Uh, nice Tremor breaking up that fear line. Fnobbers to start healing him, but the next Kidney Shot could easily be the game, and Sozi's actually committing his damage here. I wonder if that ends up being a bit of a mistake, as the next setup could have been lethal. Uh, now with a full sheep caught onto Kron, Sozi might be in trouble. Maybe needs to consider running here. He's trying to line a sight on the box. Fnobbers moving forward, maybe looking for a cycle. I'm not able to get it just yet. Uh, Kron's leaving the CC now. Should be able to recover his team, but with no cloak, one block remaining. Troll Jargon look like they're starting to get ahead here. Zipai's going to trick it out, interrupt the Ring of Frost, but they connect the sheep regardless. And with no Shamanistic Rage and no Trinket, they are in trouble. Leaksees is looking to maybe land a defensive Ring of Frost here to try and keep Zipai alive. A full fear on the Fnobber. We can see the Tremor Totem to break him out. And now Zipai going on offense, popping that Ore Mastery, looking for a Lava Burst over on the Blackfires. He really wants to get this last Ice Block out from him. <laughs> they're going to get it at 1%, <laughs> barely surviving. And now they're swapping on to Sos potentially, who's still down at 50% HP. Kron's gotten to a sheep, but he's, he's on an Earth. Earthquake, maybe a bit of a misplaced Earthquake is going to break up the CC, and now Kronz gets to heal for free. Another setup over on the Zipai is going to force that Shamanistic Rage out. Do they have enough damage to kill him through it? Do they have enough CC to keep it going? They land the half shape. A bit of a mistake here, overlapping the fear and the blind, but maybe it doesn't matter. They're doing so much damage to Zipai. He's trying to pick himself back up. Killing Spree comes out, and I think that overlap actually might have cost him a kill on Zipai right there. 
Yeah, they would have at least got the trinket from Fnobbers if they blamed it before the fair there, I'm fairly sure of it. But uh, the fact that they overlap that allows the tremor to come out, the blame was only DR, which means there's less CC on Fnobbers, he's able to recover, they have trinket available now, they can be looking to push, but a random sap comes into CP, I'm not quite too sure how that landed, but uh, maybe he just couldn't hit anything, because they are just LOSing behind the pillar the whole time. Uh, we, I really like the fact that Fnobbers is always pushing for these claims out of the Deep Freeze, but we do see the Deep Freeze onto Kronz right now, the PS onto Sozzy, can they follow up the Deep Freeze? It doesn't look like it just yet, so Kronz doing a good job just staying behind the pillar, they realize right now they are the team behind, they need to be playing slightly more defensive, going for this dampening, so they can perhaps kill his elemental shame, but there's so much damage coming out from Troll Yagen, Blackfires is down to 30%, the bomb comes out, they realize there is no next game, they need to win now, and z is in that bomb, but it doesn't look like he's going to even go down, he's not even using the Sham Rage. Blackfires was taking counter pressure as well, but Kronz did get some nice mana there. He is back up to 70%, so it does look like the team's going to be okay for now. But that bomb really didn't achieve much. They didn't even force the Sham Rage from Zipai. Basically, no cooldowns have been used on Troll Yagen. We've got a full reset for them. Team, you can look at their bars. You see every single cooldown available for this team right now, and that means they're going to be playing super offensive in this final game, potentially, for them to win this series. Kronz is going to start falling behind, but it looks like he's actually sustaining quite well. That drink is getting him up to 60%. He's not struggling too much. We do see the deep freeze into potential rock, but it does get locked out, so the fear follows up and said, can they get a rub off that? Doesn't look promising. It looks no. like Zipai again is going to be okay. He's sitting healthily on about 90% HP. Phenomenus is just behind, keeping the hot sub, keeping him at full HP, and Leeksy is just free to do whatever he wants. We see now the Hex onto Blackfires. Can we see a deep onto Kronz? They could get a lot of CC here. And Sozzy is stuck in that full bash. No trinket available for like four seconds. And the Earthquake Sun, there's no cloak. Oh, there is a cloak available. And we see the cloak come out at 30%. He got chunked down so hard that I even thought he wasn't, uh, didn't have it available. Kronz sitting in clones there as well. But it's their turn to go offensive. They're actually swapping it onto Leeksy now. I really like this choice. They were not succeeding on Zipai. And the he actually comes out. He's blocked. He could die here. And the trinket has to come out from Phnobos from that. A small miscalculation from Leeksy. I really feel like coming out of that block so fast was a big mistake on his part. Uh, now Sozi, though, with no cloak, needs to be careful here. He does have his trinket for a stun, uh, but no stun actually available. Maybe they can just kill him with damage? Uh, Kranz is trying to keep him up here. Phnobos is actually getting locked on his clone. What are we will win next going to do with this lockout? Doesn't look like they can do too much just yet. Sozi's just taking so much damage. He needs to maybe go back to the pillar. He's going to step kidney shot Zipa, but they shoot him at the same time and kind of wasting their kidney shot here. I mean, if they're swapping Elixir, I guess they don't really need it. It looks like they want to do that, setting up a fear on a Zipai, a Ring of Frost on a Fnobbers, and they are going to commit now onto Leeksy, who only has one more ice block remaining. How much damage can they really pump out right now? They need to try and get this final block, uh, but they don't continue the CC chain. They, get, they snag the Sneaky Sheep and force the second block with it. Well done from Blackfires, trying to sneak that out in the last couple seconds, and now they've got a win condition. Leeksy has no blocks and no trinket on Fnobbers, no trinket on Zipai. If they get the right CC with the fear on Z5, a sheep on Fnobbers, vice versa, it doesn't really matter. Just as long as those two people are CC'd, Leeksy could easily go down. We can see Blackfire knows that. He's just defensively sheeping Z5, trying to just pause the game for a couple more seconds until Kidney Shot comes up to go. But Kronz is completely out of mana. There's no cold snap for Blackfire for five more seconds, four more seconds. Pain Suppression comes out. Kronz has no mana. And despite them having a win condition, just because he has no mana, I don't think they're going to be able to push. How is he going to do it? Kronz is at 2% mana. They're trying to find a way to do it. A preemptive iron bark from Fnobbers will deflect the attack for a few more seconds, but I don't think they can actually push to kill him just because Kronz has no mana. Yeah, Kronz really needs to drink right now. He's desperately, they're all behind the pillar. They're desperately, desperately, desperately trying to get that drink for their healer because they do have this advantage that they have their master spell for Leeksy's ice blocks, but they, can't just, they can't benefit from it because they're just doing it too late. The swaps to Leeksy have come out too late in the game. There's no mana available on Kronz, no MDs, no offensive purges. They can't do anything right now. And Blackfires might just go down. He's so low on mana. The DL rough comes out. He's down to 12%, 10%. Surely he's going to go down. He gets locked out on the sheep. There's no peels coming out from Source. He's in the full clone. And he will go down, and we win next. Do find a win condition, but they just find it too, too late. Leeksy did have to use both his blocks within a couple of minutes, but we're just too late into dampening now. I feel like if they'd known that from the start, maybe if they had that extra game, if it wasn't for the game where they uh, lost due to not having the correct gear on, perhaps they could have realized their win condition earlier. And even if they lost this game, I feel like they would have won the next one by killing Leeksy. But uh, a really unfortunate chain of events means that... Uh, Kronz does run out of mana and uh, they do go down. There you have it. Troll Jargon is going to knock them out of the tournament and move on in the lower bracket and a 3-1 to one victory. Uh, that being said, 
you think Troll Jargon would have played Frost Mage Elemental Shaman if there was a game for? Yeah, I'm no, not sure. I, 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 I think after they realized how easily yeah, yeah. the team could turn on Leaksy, they would have, uh, they would have perhaps reconsidered. But um, yeah, Kron's had to spend a lot of mana emptying the block earlier from Leaksy as well, and the fact that he has to spend so much mana on offensive spells like that means he has to make the choice between that attrition and between the offensive plays, and they just can't kill without the offensive plays. I feel like they just need to be able to push for it earlier. Yeah, it's finding that harmony between offensive and defensive. But, you know, we win next. They've shown that they're able to do that. And uh, 